Hello, Siouxland Egg in the Classroom students and parents and anyone else that's watching. My name is Erica Wagner, and I am coming to you today uh, five miles west of Holstein, Iowa. We're here visiting my parents' farm. I don't know if you can see the cow and calf pairs in the background. They're cleaning yards today after that snow we had in the last couple days. Um, we came here today because, well, for one, my dad has a nice heated shop and I wanted to be inside um, with big equipment so that we could be talking about farm safety. Farm safety is very important and I think it's something that sometimes gets overlooked. Um, there's a lot of different things that on the farm that we take for granted and I think farm safety is one of them so it's an important lesson uh, that we all need to be more aware of so we're going to cover a few different subjects today um, <clears throat> I will be introducing in just a little bit I'll be introducing my helpers um, that will be helping me teach you about farm safety so I hope you enjoy this visit so now we've come inside the shop and I would like to go ahead and take a minute and introduce my helpers. So we'll start right here. Go ahead. Hi, my name is Nathan Wagner. I am Erica's husband. Next to me is my son, Gunnar. Um, I'm in fifth grade and I'm 10 years old. Yeah. I am Sutton and I'm in third grade and I'm eight years old. Very good. So we will go ahead and our first lesson is going to be with this big feeder wagon. Um, we're going to be talking about the PTO shaft and the dangers of that. Okay, as Erica alluded to before, what we have here is a feeder wagon and it is hooked to the back of a tractor. The feeder wagon is what farmers use to mix feed rations. Uh, I know in some of your guys' prior chats and some of your other learnings, you guys have learned about different feeds that animals uh, eat. Well, the farmers, to make sure that the cattle, hogs, anything, have exactly what they need for feed so that they can grow, uh, mix their feed in a feeder wagon. It's like a big mixer that all the ingredients go into. Yep, it'd be no different than your mom or your grandma making a, uh, mixing a bag of uh, cookies, a batch of cookies. Same thing, everything goes into the feeder wagon, everything goes into the mixer, gets mixed, and either gets baked, or in this case, goes to the feed bunks and feeds the livestock. Uh, this feeder wagon, by itself has no power. So the tractor, which we pull the feeder wagon with, is what gives us all of our power. We have hydraulic power, and then we have direct power coming off the PTO. What's, you know what the PTO stands for? Yeah, the PTO stands for power takeoff. So all that, all that simply means is that it is taking, the feeder wagon is taking power off of the tractor, power takeoff. So anytime we transfer power from the tractor to a feeder wagon, we have a shaft. And if you guys can see here, this yellow shaft has a guard on it. That yellow shaft, and we will show you guys this in a little while, actually spins, transfers energy into the, into the uh, feeder wagon, and actually creates the mix, which mixes the feed together just like your mom's mixing bowl at home. Uh, <clears throat> Out can, of all the, can you show the inside or not really? Yeah, yeah we can see. I don't mind my hand. So we're gonna go around the back side of the feeder wagon. And we got a ladder here. So, as you can see, there are screws or augers, whatever you want to call them inside the feeder wagon and this is what actually mixes so you can see some of the leftover ration from this morning i see some corn silage and i see some corn i see some alfalfa hay i see some grass hay and some corn stalks and that's what makes up the ration that is fed to the livestock there's also if we look in spots too i'm sure we can find some wet cake which comes from methanol plants that's a byproduct that is also used in livestock rations So back to the back of the tractor here. So we have our power takeoff shaft right here. You can see on the back of the tractor, there's actually a spline shaft 
that is turning when the engine is running and that's what's driving the power takeoff which then causes the feeder wagon to do its mixing do you want to go ahead and start it up yep okay can i talk about the scale if you want to talk about the scale while he turns it on that's fine it's gonna be long yeah okay and then the next part of a feeder wagon is the scale right there Yep. The scale is used for, so if you have like 50 head of cattle, you need to know how much, it's kind of like when my dad was talking about a mixing bowl, how much ingredients and stuff, so like you need one third cup of flour, it's kind of like I need 1,300 pounds of silage, 500 pounds of wet cake, 300 pounds of cracked corn. Right, and that tells you on the scale, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. We're gonna take a look here. If you guys can see right at the tip of my finger, you can see the shaft that is spinning. The guard on the outside is not spinning. That's part of the safety features that should someone lose their balance or fall, they could potentially get caught up in that shaft. So as you can see, the tractor's running, the power takeoff is spinning, the guard is not, which is a good thing. That's one safety thing that we have here that is operating the way it's supposed to be. And now you can see the augers or the screws operating to mix the feed. Shut this off quick. So just a general rule of thumb is any time, I guess, that we've taught the boys that any time they're around a tractor, feeder wagon, or any other implement that has a power takeoff, whether it's got a guard on it or not, we stay away. Let's stay back. That is the number one thing on pretty much any farm that's going to get you in trouble. Power takeoff has no safety. It's, it's running. If it's running, it's running. It does not stop. It won't stop. If something gets caught on it, it's going to continue to spin. That's when bad things happen. People have bad days. So that is the number one rule of thumb with safety with tractors. Unless this machine is off like it is now, then you can come inside this safety zone. But pretty much from the edge of the feeder wagon to the tire, we we'll want to stay outside of that anytime this machine's running. All right, so the next thing we're gonna talk about is just some line of sight and hand signals that we use to make sure that we keep everyone safe on our farm. So right now I'm sitting in the operator station of the tractor. We're gonna pan over here to our left and we can see Erica and we can see Gunner, but we can't see Sutton, okay? Anytime that you're around ag equipment, you wanna make sure that their eyes can see your eyes. That's part of the operator's responsibility. That's also part of whoever's on the ground might be doing things, whether it's opening a gate or they might have gotten out of the uh, loader tractor from putting feet in, but you need to be cognizant of where everybody's at. So this is just a little example. They're right up against the tire. I can see Erica, I can see Gunner. I can't see Sutton. So guys, why don't you take a step back? Okay, now I can see everybody. 
So as somebody that's a little bit shorter. So probably not our feet. We probably would want to be back farther. Yeah. But as somebody that's a little shorter, see now we can see. So I can see their eyes, they can see my eyes. So now what we do on our farm and what we do here at our uh, in-laws farm is that we have hand signals. So I'm going to go, I need you guys to step back a little bit. That's good. Just stay right there. Stay right there. Okay. We all understand those hand signals. So anytime that you might be visiting a farm, it's always good to have an understanding. Make sure that everybody knows that, hey, this means come here. Oh, stop. Back up a little bit right there okay when i ask them to stay right there i need them to stay right there that way that's one less thing i have to worry about because i might have to go through a really narrow gate hole here and it's a way for me to know that i can focus on what i'm doing the job that i need to do and then i don't have to worry about them because they're at a safe distance okay as somebody was going to gunner i need you to come up here i need to tell gunner something so he's going to come up He's going to use three points of contact to enter the tractor. Hey, Gunner, I need you to open that gate for me. Can you go get the gate? Yep. Okay. The tractor is stopped. My feet are off the pedals. He knows that he can go around the tractor. He's going to go open the gate. So it's just communication. The most, most important thing on the farm with safety is communication. And if there's questions, stop. Stop what you're doing. Make sure the operator knows that they need to stop what they're doing. And then we can have that communication and we can talk and figure out what our next plan is. A lot of times when the boys were smaller also, I would put them in an orange hat or an orange coat so that we would be able to see them. And that's just a little tip that we found to be helpful when the kids were small. Yep. So anytime, hey, it, does, it could be a feeder wagon, it could be a combine, it could be a truck. Any, any large piece of equipment, understand that you have a lot of blind spots. There's a planter sitting next to us here. There's a lot of blind spots. There's a lot of places people could be in that the operator can't see. So what we've just kind of figured out, what works really well for us is we take our time. We try not to get in a hurry and we make sure that all of us get to uh, go in the house together and have, have dinner together.